Hi, this is Miss Pellegrin, and today we're looking at Module 3, Lesson 1, Generating Equivalent Expressions. So, our outcomes today are that students are able to generate equivalent expressions using the fact that addition and multiplication can be done in any order, which is our community property we've been talking about a lot, and uh, any grouping. Okay, so we've been talking about any order, commutative, any grouping, associative, but only when you have it as addition and multiplication. Also, you see that you can use any order and any grouping to a subtraction problem by using the additive inverse relationships. So when we're adding the opposite, so we always had, if we had subtraction, 2 minus 3, we changed it to addition, plus a negative 3, okay? And then we would be able to use the commutative or the associative property. And likewise, anytime we have a division problem, we can still use the associative um, and commutative property as long as we use the multiplicative inverse relationships which are multiplying by the reciprocal. So if we had 2 divided by 3, we would say 2 times 1 third is the same thing. Okay, And then we could use the commutative or associative property. Students recognize that any order does not apply to expressions, mixing addition and multiplication leading to needing to follow the order of operations. So it won't work um, if we're mixing addition and multiplication. We can't have both in the same one and then use the commutative and associative property. Then we do have to use the order of operations. Okay, so go ahead and flip to page four where you find the vocabulary that we're going to be needing um, a lot throughout this module. Okay, um, so variable. Variable is a symbol such as a letter that represents a number. So it's a placeholder for a number. It holds the place of a number. Okay, for instance, you saw back in like first grade, two plus what equals five. And you would know that that was going to be 3. And so now we're changing it to a variable. 2 plus a equals 5. And so you know that a would therefore equal 3. In a numerical expression, um, a numerical expression is a number or its combination of sums and differences or division numbers that evaluates to a number, so it is equal to a number. Okay, um, so for instance, 2 plus 3 um, does equal to 5, so that would be a numerical expression. Value of a numerical expression um, can be a can be found when evaluating the expression. So when you're given that, you can find this. So this would be the value of the numerical expression. Okay. Um, in, in an expression, you don't have this exact everything. You don't have the bottom part down here. Uh, but I wanted you to be able to have a good example of it. An expression is a numerical expression or it is the result of replacing some or all of the numbers in a numerical expression with variables. Okay, so an expression is a numerical expression, but we are replacing some with variables. So for instance, you could start out with a numerical expression, such as this one, one-third times 2 plus 4 minus 7. You might see this written as one-third times two plus four minus seven. We don't usually see the multiplication sign there. Um, the parentheses tells us to multiply. 
and replace some of the numbers with letters so that we would get something like this. So one third times x plus y minus 7. So the x would just be representing x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4, and um, z is equal to, and it would depend, I would say 7, not minus, negative 7, yeah, it would be equal to 7. Okay, sorry. We can build such expressions from scratch, such as x plus x times y minus z, and note that if numbers were placed in the expression for the variables, uh, the result would be a numerical, so numerical being a number expression. So if we were given that x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4, and z is equal to 7, if they said that, then we would just plug in 2 plus 2 times y, whoops, not y, we just were told what y was going to be, y is 4 times 4 minus 7, okay? And then we could therefore um, solve that down to a, and have a value of a numerical expression. We could find the value of that numerical expression. Okay, in equivalent, equivalent meaning equal, two expressions are equal. Equivalent, they're equal if both expressions evaluate to the same number for every substitution of all the numbers into the letters in both expressions. Okay, so they have to have that same value for the numerical expression. Um, okay, so if I had 2a plus a. And I wanted to know, is it equivalent to 3a? Is that the same thing? I could plug in any number for a. So I'm going to plug in. I'm going to say a equals 3. I just would test it. I could do 4. I could do 7. It doesn't matter. It would have to be the same. So 2 times 3 plus 3. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. Okay, and so if I did it here, 3 times 3 using the same number, 3 times 3 is 9. So because they're both 9, we would say that 2a plus a is equivalent to 3a. It's equal to it. Okay, um, expression in expanded form. And an expression is written as sums and or differences of products whose factors our numbers, variables, or variables raised to whole numbers is expanded form. Um, so a single number variable or a single product of numbers of variables is it considered to be an expanded form. Examples of expressions in, in expanded form include 324, 3x, 5x plus 3, minus 4, and x plus x or sorry, plus 2x plus 3x. So the fact that uh, we have all of these x's, we'll look a little bit more into that when we get to standard form. Um, okay. So a term um, sorry Each summand of an expression in expanded form is called a term. For example, the expression 2x plus 3x plus 5 consists of three terms. So 2x is a term plus, so it's a positive 3x, plus 5. So there are three terms there. They're separated by addition signs. Okay. Coefficient of a term is the number found by multiplying just the numbers in a term together. Uh, it's called the coefficient. So for 
example, the given product 2 times x times 4, its equivalent term is 8x. So 2 times 4 is what gives me 8, and so we're doing 8 times x. So the number 8 is what we call our coefficient. So it's the number that's in front of that variable. So that's called our coefficient. Okay. And then finally, an expression in standard form. An expression in standard form, sorry, in expanded form with all its like terms collected is said to be in standard form. So for example, so we have that 2x plus 3x plus 5 again uh, is a expression in expanded form. Okay, so this is in expanded form. However, if it wants to be written in standard form, then the like terms, so these both have an x, so they're like terms, they are alike, they both have that, they must be combined, so we take our um, coefficients and we add them together, so 3 plus 2 is 5, so our equivalent expression is 5x plus 5. Okay, so we're going to page S2, example 1. It asks us to rewrite 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3. And it wants us to do it by combining like terms. So we're going to write the original expressions and expand each term using addition. What are the new expressions equivalent to? Okay, so... We have 5x plus 3x equals, so we're writing it as addition. So 5x means we're multiplying 5 times x. So there are 5x's. We would do, remember, multiplication is just repeated addition. So there we have x plus x plus x plus x. So there are five x's. Five x. And then we have plus three x. So there are one, two, three x's. Okay which gives me a total of 8 x's. So this is equal to 8 x. So all of those things are equivalent. 5 x plus 3 x is equivalent to x plus 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 x which is also equivalent to 8x. Okay. So then we have 5x whoops, minus 3x equals, I should have done that a little bit lower, So then we have 5x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's, but we're taking away, we're getting rid of these three x's. And so how many x's are we left? We're left with 2 So because both of the terms, so remember we said this was a term and this was a term, so we would have here our term is 5x and our other term is positive 3x. Here we would have 5x is a term and then here we would have minus 3x. What do we do? 
plus a negative 3x. Okay, so we could rewrite them using the distributive property. So 5 plus 3 is what gives me 8, and then I'm times in it by x. And then 5 minus 3 taking the coefficients. So those would also be equivalent. Okay. In part B, it says find the sum of this and this. So this one was just rewriting these two separate expressions. This one we're taking and we're combining. So we're going to find the sum. So that's 2x plus 1. and, meaning we're adding it to it, 5x. So that's how we would write that. That would be our original expression. Okay. Um, so with the associative property, we could regroup this. We could say 2x, because it all is as addition, plus 1, plus 5x. Okay, so we're going to regroup. And put that together so this would be our associative property. Okay, our commutative property says that we could move it around so 2x plus 5x plus 1. Is our commutative property. Um, our associative property, again, of addition, 2x plus 5x plus 1 says we're going to group these together. Or we can group anything together, but that would be, we'd be wanting to group what's alike together. Okay. Uh, and then we combine like terms with the distributive property. So the coefficient, we have 2 plus 5 times x plus 1. So that's, we're going to be combining like terms. We're showing it with the distributive property. Okay, and so then what would be equivalent to it? 2 plus 5 is 7, so we have 7x plus 1 as an equivalent expression. So we use that commutative and associative property to regroup them so that we could put the like terms together. Um, did the properties change the value of the expression? And then how do you know? Um, so we're going to look at an example of that um, to see and confirm that it did not change anything. Okay, so we have 2x plus 1 plus 5x was our original. Okay, and we said we have 7x plus 1. Okay, so what happens if we put in the same number for x? So we're going to use x equals 3. We could have used 2, 7, 15. Uh, we're just going to use 3. So if we take and we plug in, 3 instead. So instead of an x, I'm going to put in a 3. 2 times 3. Plus 1, plus 5. And if I did the same thing over here, so 7 times 3 plus 
one. Okay, so two times three is six plus one plus five. So six plus one is seven. Sorry, I realized I made a mistake there. This was X. So then this was times three. There we go. That's where I was making a mistake at. Huh? Okay. Okay, so six plus one. And then five times three is 15. So seven plus 15 and seven plus 15 is 22. So over here, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So you notice when we had it in what we call standard form, so we combined our like terms, uh, there was one that had an x and one that did not. Remember we call that our constant, and then this number in front of the x is called our coefficient. Um, so this is our constant. We had a lot less steps, or not a lot less, but a few less steps when we um, plugged in a number there. Okay, Less steps helps us to make less mistakes. Okay. So um, let's go on. Find the sum of negative 3 plus 2 and 5a minus 3. Okay, so let's write it out first. Negative 3a plus 2 plus 5a minus 3. Okay, so we had this together. And then we had this together. Okay, so because I see subtraction, the very first thing I'm going to do is change it to everything to addition. So we have negative 3a plus 2 plus 5a. And then the subtraction sign is going to change to an addition sign. So then we have to do the additive inverse of positive 3, which is negative 3. Okay, so that was add the opposite. So we can use our commutative and associative property to move things around. Okay, so any order, any grouping would be our commutative property. So I have some A's. I'm going to put the A's together. Negative 3A plus 5A plus... 2 plus a negative 3. Okay, so that is our commutative. And um, then we're going to combine the like terms. So this is not simplified yet. This would be an expanded form. So we're going to combine our like terms. So we have negative 3 plus 5 times a plus 2 plus a negative 3. So negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2 times a plus 2 plus a negative 3 is a negative 1. Okay, so we use the distributive property to combine our like terms. Okay, and so then we don't generally like to have the two symbols, so this would actually just be 2a minus 1. That would be equivalent. So this would be adding the inverse um, is the same as subtracting. So is 
is subtracting. So this would be our final answer. Okay, so it was the difference. The only difference here is what we had started with subtraction. We changed it to addition, and then it was like everything else that we had. Okay, so example number two. Find the product of 2x and 3. So product, meaning multiplication, so any group in any order with multiplication. So 2x, we're multiplying times 3. Okay, so we're multiplying 2x. Sorry. So any group in any order. So we're doing 2 times x times 3 is what's actually going on there. Okay, so we could regroup this and do the x times 3 first. That would be our associative. it was all as multiplication we could change the order and get the numbers next to each other so 2 times 3 times x which would be our commutative property okay and finally so then if we did the 2 times the 3 that would be 6 Okay, so we use that associative and commutative property uh, to reorder and regroup it. Did it change it? No, it did not. So no matter what number um, we plugged in here, uh, it wouldn't change the value. So um, we have 2x times 3 and 6x. So we're going to prove that. That's uh, one of the things we have to do in our homework is show that. Okay, so again, let's make x equal to um, 3. Doesn't matter, I just keep using 3. So 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6, and three, 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so this for this to be true 6x, um, it has to also equal 18. So when we do 6 times 3 instead of an x. So 6 times 3 does give me 18. Again, you see that we have a few less steps when we have it in standard form. Rather than when it is like this as expanded form. Okay, so we're going to example three, but we're going all the way to letter E in example three. Um, before that, we have uh, all of these parts, so we're just going to do all of it together. Okay, so in example three, in um, part F, we have three times 2x. And so, um, we're just going to show what that would look like. So we have 2x times 3. So we have it 2x three times. So that gives me a total of 6x. Plus, then we have 4y five times. So we have a total of 20 y's plus four times two, which is eight um, times z. So there are eight z's. OK, 
Okay. So we have eight Z's. Okay, so how we would show be able to show that is we're doing three times two. We're regrouping it times X, which is six X. And then here we're doing four times five first, and then Y, so plus 20Y. And then we already can see we have the four times two, so plus four times two. I'm just showing what I'm doing first with the parentheses, times Z plus, so four times two is eight Z. Now I have X, Y, and Z. They are not the same, and so therefore I can't do any more um, combining. So this would be our standard form. This would be expanded. Okay, Alexander says that 3X plus 4Y is equivalent to 3 times 4 plus x times y because of any order any grouping is incorrect why or why not okay um so we're going to do x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to a negative 3 to c so if i plugged in those numbers so 3x so instead of x, I'm going to put in negative 2 plus 4. Instead of y, I'm going to put in negative 3. Okay. So 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. Plus 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. 6 plus a negative 12 is a negative 18. Okay. So it has to work over here as well. So we have 3 times 4 plus x as negative 2 times y as negative 3. 3 times 4 is 12, plus negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6, so 12 times 6 is positive 18. So this is not equivalent, not equivalent. Okay, and so therefore it will not work. Okay, so um, we did have to use negatives to show that it wouldn't work with the positive numbers that I had tried. It did work. Um, so we do have to look at more than just one example sometimes. Um, so any grouping in order, we can't mix it with the addition and the multiplication. So that's what that's showing here. So um, in other words, this one had an X. This was in front of the X. This was in front of the Y. You couldn't switch up that order. You couldn't put those two coefficients together because they didn't have the same uh, variable behind them. So you couldn't put those together. Uh, so in closing, we f see that uh, we can use um, any group in any order with the sums. Um, because of the commutative and the associative property. Um, can we do it with subtraction? Yes, we can, as long as we rewrite it as addition. Uh, and then why can't we use any order, any grouping with the multiplication and division? And it's because it changed the value of the expression. It did not have the same value. One was negative and one was positive. Okay, so you have your lesson summary that kind of sums this up. Terms that contain exactly the same variable symbol can be combined by addition or subtraction because the variable represents the same number. So if they had the same variable, you could combine them. Um, any order, any grouping can be used where terms are added or subtracted, but you have to change your subtraction to addition um, to group them together differently, and it does not affect the sum of the expression. And that is it.